All right, a very, very good evening to you from wherever part of the world you're listening to 89.7 Contact FM. This is One on One, and my name is Eugene Anangwe. We were supposed to be having the Minister of Health at this particular moment to talk to us about uh, about the suspected Ebola case, uh, that uh, today we have information that uh, the, that patient has uh, tested positive for malaria as uh, the tests for Ebola the results for the test for Ebola are still being awaited. But of course, uh, she could not be able to join us in the show. We had a communication that uh, she had a busy schedule this evening talking about and also dealing with the management of uh, that particular issue. But with us in the studio is none other than Diana Teta because the show has to go on. And so we have with us right here in the program, Diana Teta. She's a musician, very, very beautiful indeed. And uh, we've seen her grow from time to time. And therefore, today we're here to talk to her and get to know her even better. So, Diana, welcome to One on One. Thank you. Yeah. So, what have you been up to? Hmm, music, mm. especially Guma Guma competition. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, a lot of things going on. You've told me that uh, you officially plunged into music last year. Yeah, I would say last year, but uh, yeah, last year that's when I started professionally doing music. Mm -hmm. But before that, I've been I've been singing. Uh, I couldn't go in front of people mm -hmm. and or record, mm -hmm. so I professionally started uh, my music career last year. Last year. Yes. So looking at the progress so far, what 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 can you tell us? What do you think? What do you feel about yourself? Yes, about myself with my music, I would say. Yeah, now I'm in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know exactly why I'm here, mm -hmm. uh, why I'm in this music industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, con considering all the things I've been doing, you, there have been Task of Project Fame, there's been a lot of things going on that made me decide, actually, that, can, that I can do music mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, professional mm -hmm. music artist, um, as an artist. So, yeah, I would say I've gained a lot. I've gained uh, confidence connections it's it has opened doors to opportunities mm -hmm. and connections and that's what what is all about that's what i've been always I, i'm sure the for. the expectation was not uh, just about having a rosy picture or having everything going on smoothly could you tell us between the expectations that you had when you got into music professionally and what you have seen now in reality do you see any resemblance in in those expectations and what you have seen are you getting what you expected well, it's a long journey. I've not yet uh, got what I'm expecting exactly, but it's on the way. Like it's, uh, it gives um, hope that I'll get there. So what I've been looking for is like my way of sharing my, you know, my passion for music, mm -hmm. my messages in mm -hmm. my music. Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm doing, and mm -hmm. so far it's it's going quite good if I consider one year of my career. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean. I think I'm gonna go even farther than this, mm -hmm. so it's it is it's not that easy as as you think mm -hmm. as you you know as peop some people imagine. I thought I would go in a, in a recording room and record a song and it's playing everywhere, but mm -hmm. that's not how it goes. It's mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you know that you have to to do and to sacrifice and to really focus so that you get there so i'm still on that journey mm. to get there yeah mm. so when you say you still haven't seen what you're expecting mm -hmm. maybe beyond just what yes. you tell me now is there anything more that you expected and you expect out of the music industry so for me i want my my music to be unlimited so far i would say i'm only a musician in rwanda but i want to go over like even beyond that mm -hmm. international icon if you can say mm -hmm. that's what i want that's my goal i want to be known if possible in the whole world mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. i believe i have a talent i have a, I have a good a beautiful voice a good message to share with people healing hurts so i really want to go farther than this i don't yes i like the fact that only in one year i've made it at this um, level in Rwanda, I mean, being part of Guma Guma is not that easy. Mm -hmm. It's not something you wake up in the morning and just participate in Guma Guma. Mm -hmm. So I think it also shows that I'm capable. So maybe in here in two, three years, five, I, I will be 
big, big. Yes. We, we'll be looking at uh, some of the things that probably you are already doing to take you to that particular international platform that you wish to be in. Mm-hmm. But let's look at the part of the Guma Guma. When your name was mentioned, there are those who felt, really? Tata? Yes. Why? He, she has no song. She has done nothing. Why is she in that list? First of all, how did you feel when you were named? And of course, how did you react to such kind of uh, criticism? Well, I won't lie. When I was, when I, when I heard my name among the 15 nominated, mm-hmm. I was surprised. Mm-hmm. I would have to say I was really surprised. I, I didn't go. I didn't leave home. Like Knowing. Knowing that I'm going to be one of the 15. Mm-hmm. So when my name came up, I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah. Then I, I said to myself, I have to prove mm-hmm. that I belong at, at the right place at the right moment. Mm-hmm. So, yes, of course, they've been saying, yes, she has only one song. But the truth was, it wasn't only one song, but they didn't like, they, maybe they didn't know my other songs. So, uh, it was also another way of actually putting myself out there and showing that I've been singing even before mm-hmm. the Fata Fata song that people, okay, that people know me mm-hmm. um, for. So yeah, I proved it when I went, when I when I made it to the top ten. That was a tough competition. Like you had to really prove that you belong there. So mm. I did that, and I kept proving a lot. And of course, criticism. You, if you're a, you know, a pop like let's say if you're, if you're a star or, you know, a public a, figure, a public figure. Let's mm. say. Mm. If you're a public figure, you don't expect only positive comments. There will be um, criticism. People will criticize. People will say negative, also positive. So what I did, I didn't really count on the 30% that's going to put me down. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I focused on the 70 of those people who are like, Tita, we believe in you. You know, so that's what pushed me and said, okay, you know, I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. And so far, I've proved that I can do this. And... Who knows? Well, I didn't make it to the top three, but next year I might take it. So, All right. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. So, so, so let's look at those also who continue to say up to today that uh, you know this one was favored because one of uh, the ladies who was expected to be in the list. I'm talking about Nolis was not able to be on the list due to particular reasons, and so they looked around and said, "Who can we put there?" Then you were picked. What would you tell those people today? Uh, well, I have to correct that. So, mm. no less was nominated among the 15 mm-hmm. while I was already there. So, okay. I had to compete with her. Mm-hmm. So, the thing is, she didn't make it in. Like, she didn't decide to go in for her personal reasons, reasons that yes. I respect. Mm-hmm. And they put in uh, Young Grace. Mm-hmm. So, what I can say is that I belong there, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. I belong there. That's that's going to be proved on 30th. It's my very first time participating in this. Mm-hmm. And... I don't feel bad that I didn't make it to the top three. It's a long, it's, you know, it's, it takes a lot. You have to, you know, I also tr- believe that the top three deserve it, really, to be honest. If you see like Jay Polly or the others, they have, they have the, what you can, ca- what you can call experience, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they, they know what it's all about being in front of 30,000 people, people yes. around here. They're known, their songs are very known. So I, I think I, I still have a, a, a very, little you know long way to go to go so, yes. so so you still feel you're still learning the ropes yes i'm learning that like yes i'm learning this you know mu- like the thing okay. the, the, the guma guma thing okay so yes. let's 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 talk about your dream and ambitions you know peop- wise people say you know you are you, you you need to have dreams but then you need to wake up so that you can actualize those dreams you don't continue sleeping so let's talk about your waking up part to work towards achieving your dream what have you been doing well, first of all, what I can say is that there's nothing you will um, achieve without dreaming about it. Mm-hmm. I'm a big dreamer. I dream a lot. I dream seeing myself on the red carpet mm-hmm. and, you know, like ha- getting like awards or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of dreams going on in my head. So, but yeah, as you say, you have to wake up and get there. So I think I've already, you know, woke up because, you know, I've i've been recording i've been trying to do videos it's not an easy job you have to sacrifice a lot to to you know to do all the things and put yourself together but yes so what i do about it is i'm really determined to do whatever it takes to put my name out there the whole world needs to know me because Mm. i believe i'm unique Uh, there's only one teta on this world Mm. so it takes 
you know, I know there's there's a lot of things I can do to, you know, to make my name shine out there, mm. including my talents, including everything that can put me out there. So, uh, yeah, apart from music, I try to participate in all the things that can really push, push me. you out yes. there. Now, let's talk about that particular statement you've made here that you can do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to get you there to give you that recognition that you want. Sure. Now, we have been seeing recently in certain articles about uh, different artists who are now being under pressure and even getting themselves going to witch doctors to be able to get <laughs> there. So, is it what you mean that you can get to that particular extent? Would you do that? People, don't get me wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell no. Mm. I believe in God and mm-hmm. only one God in mm-hmm. heaven, mm-hmm. okay? He's watched me a lot like all along from you know, from the very first day I appeared on this world mm-hmm. up to now. Mm-hmm. So I believe in that God and I serve that God. Witchcraft. I don't believe in that thing. I'm sorry. But I know that I've heard a lot about, like, you know, artists. Random know, artists. Random artists. Mm-hmm. I've heard, like, as you say, as you heard it on the websites, reading about it, you know, a lot of things going on talking about the artists being you know seeing which w- which artists have you been told about <laughs> i'm not gonna mention anyone but i heard that these things are done even myself i was accused that maybe you know this uh the shell that i have on my head uh-huh. on my f- and you also know. your necklace i think it has oh a, an God. eye well, and they would well, say that is <laughs> illuminati, illuminati? Uh-huh. <laughs> that is okay listen people this is this is my way of, you know, being creative and actually looking nice. This is when you were wearing it, did you, did you, did you do it intentionally? Did you know uh, no. people will talk about this? So let me no. just put it on. Mm-mm, no. So okay, I'm gonna start with this. The shawl on my head is, um, it, it's a, sh- it's a sh- simple shawl that you can get on the market, or usually they're gotten in, in, from the sea or the mm-hmm. ocean mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the lakes. Mm-hmm. So I just found it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it somewhere. Like, it's going to be my signature. So if you say teta, they'll tell you, oh, teta with a thing on the, on the, f- on the, on the, you know, on the forehead. Mm. So that's my signature. That's me being creative. And mm-hmm. I actually, it's been successful because I've seen people, like two or three l- young ladies wearing it. And they'll be like, you inspire us. I was like, okay, this mm-hmm. is what it is. So I'm actually... A, achieving my goal with this thing Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean anything like witchcraft or i don't know what so concerning the necklace it's something i saw and i was like okay this is beautiful i'm just gonna wear it it's it's like you can wear bangles you can wear you know it's just you know let's talk about the influence the peer influence that uh, our musicians see from uh, the international musicians that probably are role models or our icons Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and and when we see them do these whole alleged Illuminati signs and put on these ornaments that are alleged as Illuminati uh, uh, ornaments or gears. And then we see our artists or even you wearing that particular kind of a thing. Do you feel probably we end up doing things that we don't even know what we're getting ourselves into? Have you ever thought of that? The question is, do you really believe in Illuminati? Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe in that thing. I I really hear about it. But it, it doesn't make any sense. It's not proved. Like, it's, you know, it's something that myself, if you ask me what I think about Illuminati, I think it's some just people, like, trying to make money out of a story. Like, mm, they really mm. put things together. If you follow it, it's very, very smart. Mm-hmm. These people are very smart. The way they prepare it and they p- try to prove something. Mm-hmm. But we forget that people also want to, you know, like, I think it's, you know, it's my, let's say, my swag. Mm-hmm. Can I say mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't really care what other people... That's the thing. I have to please myself, first of all. And then you people need to understand that is this is me. You take me the way I am. I'm not, I'm not trying to get into things that I don't really know. I've followed a lot about Illuminati, but I think it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it, it's not scientifically proved. It's nothing. It's mm-hmm. zero. It's just like something with the showbiz. And, you know, we all follow that thing. And we actually, those guys are really making good money. And mm. they're very smart the mm. way they prepare the, their thing. Mm. So much respect to them, but I don't believe in their thing. All right. Yes. Now let's talk about management of talent in Rwanda specifically. Um, in other countries, we've seen young ladies, young beautiful ladies like you who have talent and have ended up being exploited by either their managers or those who purport to be there to, to, to help them, you know, 
jump or climb the ladder of, of success in the industry. Have you faced such kind of situations here? Well, Eugene, management is very important for an artist. Personally, I really think it's very important. Mm -hmm. But I've not yet faced it because I don't belong to any label or I don't have any manager. I would do everything on my own. But there's a point you, you reach. Like right now, I've been in Guma Guma. I've been in, you know, you ha start having gigs and stuff. And you really can't manage it alone. Mm -hmm. But you need a s what I think a manager should be. It's someone who really knows you, who knows what kind of music do you want to do? What what do you really want? You know, this person has to know you, and they have to have, um, a you know, they they really have to have passion and love for what you do. Music. It's not all about business because what I know, what I've what I considering what I see and how I see other people doing, and I think it's more be it's becoming more of a of. Um, a business like someone sees you and they're like let, let me find you i'm gonna i'm fu i'm funding you but mm -hmm. i'm actually making money out, out of, of you. you in the end you ask yourself okay what have you done for this person but at the end of the day this is this is business you it know, is they invest business. in you and they they expect returns out of you it is business but the way the way they gain that money do they really work hard for that artist to, like it because we all you if you, if a nor, if a, if a random artist is not out there let's say even east africa yes what are you doing? So are you trying to put a blame on some of I'm our not, promoters and uh, managers of, of artists? I'm saying... Looking at uh, the situation as it is today, because not a lot of Rwandan music is out there. Mm -hmm. And we have most of these artists with managers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Managers need to do that. Hmm. Because all along, since 19 what, up to now, artists are still limited mm -hmm. in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So if you have a manager, they have to put you out there. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. That's my point of view. Okay. But I do believe that we all need managers at, at a certain point. Like, there's a level you reach. Even myself now, I know that it's too much. I'm having too much of things to clear. So you're looking for a manager. I'm really, yes. I know that I need that person, but I need someone who knows me very well, who knows what kind of, you know, what do I want? What mm -hmm. am I looking for at the market? Mm -hmm. And that person is willing to give me that. And it's a win-win thing, you know? But I have be to be out there. Yes. So between managers, musicians, and producers, who do you think is to blame for not having a lot of Rwandan music out there? Who do you think is, is, is the person pulling us down? That is a very difficult question, but it takes... It's the whole team. I think uh, the whole team. It has to start from the artist because the artist is the one, you know, providing, producing. But yeah, managers also have, you know, to put a little bit of efforts and mm. see what's on the, you know, international market and mm. you know put us out there because we really need, we really need Rwanda to, you know, you see how we are very like. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. We are ruled by Nigerian music. Mm -hmm you're like, okay, these guys are so far ahead. And we've been influenced to now start and doing music with them. And we're now influenced to do their, like, to do their music, actually. If you see the beats we do, we're mm. trying to do that. Because Is that we wrong? Believe Is that wrong? It's not wrong, but because that, I'm trying to say that, I'm, what I'm trying to say with that is that they rule us. Mm -hmm. They're in the music industry, if I'm wrong. So when will we rule them as Rwandan artists? That's the artists? thing. That's when? the thing. Mm. It has. It can be tomorrow. Who knows? But we need. What I think is, we need artists to, you know, okay, stay focused with that. With, with which I think we all trying to do. But we need, you know, also people out, you know, besides artists, also people supporting the music industry, mm -hmm. the media, the managers. Also, the country has to be involved in this thing. Give values, mm -hmm. right values to the music industry because it it can actually. And buy Rwandan music. Yes, and buy Rwandan music, for All right. God's sake. Thank you. See, you see, I know these things. Now, listen, Teta, uh, there's information that uh, you are also participating or, uh, you know, you're among the Rwandan, uh, you know, uh, uh, hopefuls. Those who are planning or hoping to represent Rwanda mm -hmm. on uh, the Big Brother platform. Could you briefly confirm this and also tell us what your strategy would be if your name is listed out there? as one of those who will represent Rwanda in Big Brother. All right. Yes, I can confirm. I'm one of the contestants that have, we still have eco chance to make it in the house. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, 
I'm at that that step where you're you know you I'm waiting for my name to if I if I make it in the house mm-hmm. you said you asked the, yes, the strategy yes, yes I have no strategy I'm just gonna be myself because but I, I hear these a lot I have no strategy I'm gonna be <laughs> myself come on Tito tell me something I've not heard about those who want to go for Big Brother Eugene don't you think I'm fun <laughs> really I am a very funny person and I know how to have fun so I think I'm gonna have fun in the house and let's see how it goes for God's sake so what what I, what I really First of all, Big Brother, the thing that inspired me to be part of Big Brother, it's my zeal mm-hmm. for, you know, for the, you know, for the exposure that you get mm-hmm. from that mm-hmm. platform of, mm-hmm. you know, Big Brother Africa. I mean, it's the whole of Africa, eyes on you. So I want people, if I make it in the house, I want people to see who I really am and my talents and everything about me because after all, it's the exposure that you'll never get. In when you go there, will it be about you or it will be about Rwanda? That's what I, that's what I was going to end uh-huh, with. Uh-huh. So first of all, it has to be me because I auditioned as Teta. As Teta, not as Rwanda. And the other thing is I'm carrying the Rwandan flag. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have to, you know, to represent my country. And it's a very big privilege for me. I'm looking forward to represent my country for the very first time that Rwanda is participa- participating in Big Brother Africa. Mm. Yes. So what, what, what do you know? What little information do you know about Big Brother Africa? Well, I've watched like three seasons. Mm-hmm. I know that, uh, <sighs> yes, they try to bring uh, different characters in the house and see how you, you live and, you know, you you know, how you connect with people. It's, it's yes, <laughs> how you stay in the house for three months. That's in case you make it to the finals. Mm-hmm. And there's eliminations every weekend. There's nominations in the house. There's Africa voting. Yeah, that's what I know about Big Brother. And I want to be part of it. Yes, you have your brothers and sisters who are also contesting for this. And, and w- when you get there, if you do, and if you are two of you or three of you over there, and, and you get to a point where you need to give up between your countrymate and yourself on the chopping board for those who need to go, what would you do? Okay. <laughs> I think I'll serve myself, to be honest. Okay. Yes, if I have that power of saving, I'll save myself because there I... I want this, you know. There's a reason why I left home. Yeah, Mirambo and went <laughs> for auditions. Yes. So I'll do this. But I'm not I'm not putting first, you know, the competition between me and whoever is coming from my country, my own country. Yeah. I'll, first of all, I'd be very glad to have, you know, another fellow Rwandan, you know, represent, you know, like, you know, someone representing my country. If mm. I don't make it, that person, I, 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 I expect that that person to continue and even you know win the big prize mm-hmm. uh, but if we both still there and have the power of saving who and who i'll save myself you'd you go cheat. for yourself yes first. i think anybody would do that yes all right but sometimes we have people who give up and say no i'm gonna save yeah that happened actually yeah. that happened for this girl in angola her mm. name is tatiana mm. she had to save and she was up for nomination with her boyfriend in the house mm. so she saved the boyfriend talking of boyfriends <laughs> are you dating no, I'm not. So I'm what not kind what, what what kind of a man would you be looking for if there's only one listening now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh I need a man who's intelligent. I mean smart, intelligent and respectful and someone who understands me really. That's yes, and 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 the rest is, you know, it's their appreciation from the physique and which I'm not going to go there. The way you are. Yes, the way I am and, you know, yeah, someone that I, I physically appreciate. And, and you haven't seen smart. any of this kind of a person well, today? I've, I have a lot of CVs right now. Okay. I'm, I'm studying them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I've not yet chosen because I'm very, I'm a very busy person, first of all, but if I get time and I really like think it's the right time to have someone, I'll have that person and I will You'll make it uh, either public or keep it to yourself. I'll make it public if people want to know. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Teta, for all the answers and, of course, uh, the discussion that we've had over here.
All right. So this is one on one, a show whereby we get to get opportunities to get to know those who probably we would really love to know more about. Plus, of course, Teta has put it out there. She's looking for a manager if you're out there and you feel like you can be her manager. Or also, if you can submit your CV, Matters Relationship, then go ahead and do it. The hashtag is 101RW. My name is Eugene Anangwe. See you again next time. Goodbye.